We can get so zoomed in and focused on what it is that we're building that we lose track of the core reason why we began this project in the first place. Hey, it's Rick Kettner here. Welcome back to the Startup Vlog. This is episode number 14, and in this episode, we're gonna talk about how to break out of a startup rut. Now, originally, when I was planning this episode, I was gonna cover one strategy for breaking out of this kind of a, a rut where you've lost momentum, you're not really moving things forward, you're feeling a little bit lost, you're dealing with difficult decisions, or that sort of thing. But, as I was putting together the outline for this episode, I was reminded of a second strategy. So we're gonna cover two powerful strategies for breaking out of a difficult startup rut and getting things moving in the right direction again. So let's begin with strategy number one. Focus on your why. Recently, as I was working through the first draft of my book, the first product for my startup, I hit a bit of a wall and I was dealing with the very latest chapter and I was facing some difficult content decisions and then I made the mistake of going back through previous chapters that I'd already drafted and I was starting to find little issues and other things that I wanted to correct and pretty soon I found myself in an all too common startup trap where I was a little bit overwhelmed. I hadn't yet finished the first draft and yet at the same time I was coming up with all kinds of other things that I could be doing to improve what I had already written. And this kind of thing happens with almost any kind of product where you're needing to continue to make progress on it, you're still fine tuning certain things and suddenly you start to second guess some earlier decisions and pretty soon you can find yourself in this position where you feel a little bit lost and there are too many decisions to be made, too many open-ended problems, and you're not really sure what to tackle next and you just feel lost or overwhelmed. Now, fortunately, twice a week, I meet with an online writing group where we talk about what we're working on and the various challenges or issues we may be facing. So I had an opportunity to bring this up with the group and talk about the challenge that I was facing and how I felt like I was running into a bit of a wall. And that's where Rob Fitzpatrick, the author of Write Useful Books, reminded me of a very powerful insight. And that is, when you're stuck, return to your why. In other words, remind yourself of the reason why you've taken on this particular project. Because oftentimes, when we're actually in the process of building something, we can get so zoomed in and focused on what it is that we're building that we lose track of the core reason why we began this project in the first place. We can get caught in the weeds. We can get overly focused on specific issues or certain challenges, or in my case, just the sense of overwhelm, and we can lose track of why we began began this project in the first place. So when this happens, it's very important to ask ourselves, why did you start this project? Who are you trying to help? How can you serve them best? These kinds of questions help us regain the perspective that we need to solve certain kinds of challenges and regain momentum and keep things moving forward. Now, when it comes to the project that I happen to be working on, one of my core reasons why I began this project in the first place is I'm a big believer that one of the best ways to make the world a better place is to raise kids that are more capable. And this is especially the case with so many changes today, like artificial intelligence and augmented reality and automation and all kinds of other things that are altering the job landscape and making it difficult for people to transition from one career to the next and to continue to find purpose and satisfaction in what they do. So I believe that the next generation needs to have the opportunity to be more capable, more curious, more adaptable, and ultimately better prepared to be successful in an unpredictable world. That is why I started this project. And reminding myself of this fact and getting really clear on my underlying motivation here has helped me not only solve certain content decisions and realize the obvious right direction to go in certain cases, but also it's rekindled my fire and my passion for this project. And in many ways, that is what is necessary to kind of regain that momentum where you know why you're doing what you're doing and you're more excited to see the project through. So if you're stuck with your startup, if you're caught in the weeds, if you feel like there are too many decisions to be made or you feel somewhat lost, it can be very beneficial to zoom out, focus on your why, get clear on who it is you're trying to serve and how you can serve them best. And one great book that is somewhat related to this topic 
in regards to clarifying your why and the many benefits of getting clear on your why, I recommend that you check out Start With Why by Simon Sinek. It's not directly related to this idea of overcoming a rut in your startup, but it's a really great book on the benefits of getting clear on your why and communicating that why to the rest of your team. Now, let's continue on to the second strategy. Engage in a sprint. Sometimes progress stalls, not because we've lost track of our why, but because we simply have way too much going on. We're caught in a million different things. We've got some distractions on the side. We've got various problems and challenges that we're facing. And so again, as I alluded to at the very beginning of this episode, we're just dealing with overwhelm. We don't know how to keep things moving forward. And it seems like when we work on any minor thing, we're not seeing significant results. So when we face this kind of challenge, One of the very best things that we can do is engage in what is called a sprint week, as defined in the book Sprint by Jake Knapp. And the idea here, even though there are all kinds of different approaches and strategies and tactics outlined in the book, the basic idea here is you want to choose one core problem or one key challenge that you're facing, tackle that one problem either on your own or with your team where it's literally the only thing that you're focusing on. You clear out a full week, a five-day work week, and you focus on nothing but resolving that particular challenge or building at very least meaningful momentum in that area because this can allow you to create a snowball effect where you solve one problem and that allows you to build the momentum needed to solve another problem and you get things back on track much faster. So again, many different ways to apply this. And if you are interested in engaging in a sprint week with your team, I highly recommend that you read Sprint by Jake Knapp. But in this case, the way that I'm personally applying this is in a very simplified manner. And that is I'm taking just this core idea of building rapid, meaningful momentum and applying it to the book draft that I'm working on. Because one thing that I've found lately is as I've been writing for 90 minutes, minutes every single day, as I get further into the book and as I face more difficult challenges in many cases, it's very hard to make meaningful progress in just a 90-minute period because some portion of that time is spent kind of finding my place in the book again, getting back into flow, maybe doing a little bit of research. And by the time I'm actually done that 90-minute window, I don't have a lot to show for it. I haven't created significant momentum. And then that repeats the next day and the next day. And you start to feel like you're not really moving things forward that quickly. So I'm taking this idea of a sprint week and really personalizing it to my specific situation. And this is what I would recommend for you as well. Find a way to apply it to your situation. And for me, what that is translating into is for a five-day period, not forever, but just for a five-day period, I'm going to double my daily writing commitment from 90 minutes or an hour and a half to three hours of writing. And again, this isn't something I plan to commit to long-term. I don't necessarily think this is sustainable. It's very difficult to do creative and focused work like this for long periods of time. I mean, there's a small chance that this works out great and I continue on this path, but All I'm thinking about right now is a five-day period where I take this approach, I double my writing time, and see what happens. And my goal here is to help break out of this rut that I'm already kind of working my way out of simply by focusing on my why. That's been hugely beneficial. But the reason for this Sprint week is to tackle what I just talked about, and that is the challenge of not really seeing a lot of daily progress. So what I'm hoping to see here is over the five-day work week next week, I want to see if this allows me to really accelerate the pace of the project, gain some really meaningful momentum, and feel mentally back on track in terms of having things move forward at a much faster pace. Now, I happen to be moving in just two weeks. So, Next week is when I'm going to focus on this sprint week strategy, where for each of the five workdays, I'm going to be dedicating three hours to writing and making meaningful progress on the book. And then the following week after that, I'm going to bring it back down to 90 minutes so that I can focus on the last minute details of packing things up, including packing up this entire studio, the bookshelves, the books, the lights, all of the studio equipment, and getting everything ready for the move. And the goal is to finish the first draft draft prior to the move. So I've got this sprint week, then I've got a little bit more of a relaxed week while I finish up and prepare for the move. 
But if all goes smoothly, I'm hoping to have that first draft complete at that point. Now, fortunately, I have pre-filmed a bunch of content. And so this week is the very last week that I'm filming content uh, for the YouTube channel. That will continue to be released, including some book summaries and some other content. But the startup vlog will be on temporary hiatus during this transition. So in the meantime, if you have any questions about anything that we covered here or anything that we tackled in previous episodes or anything that you would like to see covered in future episodes, let me know down in the comment section and I will tackle those questions and tackle any interesting ideas you have in future episodes once we get things back up and running in the new studio. But again, there will continue to be new content released that has been pre-filmed, including summaries and book comparisons and things like that. So with that in mind, I encourage you to subscribe and turn on notifications if you haven't already. That way you'll be notified of future episodes. And as always, thank you for tuning in and I look forward to connecting with you again in the future.